Welcome to Mana's Seal YouTube channel. The previous video link is on the description box or on the top right card. Volume 15 The Half Elf God King. Mare, who was waiting outside the green secret house, gave a little bow. I am back, Mare. Looks like everything's fine here. An eyeball corpse he, summoned using Create Undead, was floating beside Mare. Ains looked around, for the huge thing that should be there, but couldn't find it. I see. So Fenrir isn't back yet. Yes. Not yet. Fenrir was entrusted with bringing back the Ankylosis that ran away from, the Dark Elf village. If the Dark Elves had brains, they would try to follow the trail of the, Ankylosis to deal with it, while they had the trump card known as Or. So, they would have to fool the hunting party's eyes first, if they wanted to bring, the Ankylosis back to this temporary base. However, the Ankylosis was large and did not have any stealth skills, so it would be difficult for it to erase its trail by itself. Someone else would have to do it instead. They found Fenrir to be suitable for the task. Fenrir had an ability called Forcewalker. The plan was to make Fenrir carry Ankylosis here on its back, so that there would be no traces left behind. Of course, Ains could go there and teleport back with it using greater teleportation, or he could carry it with fly like Narwhal did, but Ains had to go along with the aura to the village to gather intel. In case there was an emergency, he would also be responsible for exterminating the enemy or helping or escape, so they entrusted that task to Fenrir. Looks like my prediction is off. I thought they would immediately send out a team with aura to finish off the Ankylosis. Maybe I should just fetch it myself if there's still time. I see. Then let's wait here for a bit. Anyhow, you are probably worried so I will tell you, well, you probably guessed it already seeing me returning alone. You didn't receive any messages from Or, right? Mare nodded at Ains's question. Well, that's how it is. Seems like Or infiltrated the Dark Elf village without any issues. The twins had an item that enabled two-way communication between them. If Mare didn't receive any distress signals from Or, it meant that she was safe. Still, it was possible that Or wasn't able to respond to an emergency swiftly and ended up being incapacitated. They couldn't be careless. There was also the fact that Aura changed to far weaker gear in order to blend in better with the villagers. It was far easier than usual to kill Aura in her current state. The fact that Ains didn't appoint something to guard her in secret while he knew this was because they as a group had decided not to. After a discussion with Aura and Mare, they ended up choosing not to deploy any guards around Aura. This made Ains worry so much that he would probably go unconscious from stomach pain if he had a stomach. Ains continued to regret it even now, wondering if they made the wrong decision. Perhaps there was a better idea out there. For example, Ains could create incorporeal monsters using Create Undead. Maybe they should have placed things like that somewhere around her. There were two advantages to not having anything guard or. One was that they would be free to summon monsters that were more suitable to deal with the emergency situation that might arise. The other one was it will be easier for Aura to forget about Nazarek for a bit, if there's no one from Nazarek around, especially guards, who in a sense are her subordinates. She can interact with the Dark Elves in a more relaxed manner without putting on a bold front, then. Maybe Aura could make friends then. But, at present, a critical problem had risen in Aura's path to making friends. That is, Aura ended up becoming something like a savior of the village. He didn't think that the Red Oni who cried plan was wrong. He just didn't have any other method that could make Aura infiltrate the village faster and better. Still, the present situation had gone a bit too far. Ains couldn't have become friends with the members of Ains Ulgaon in the real world where they were not equal. Similarly, Or, as the savior of the village, could not interact with the ordinary village children on their level. Ains had to bring her down to the same level as them. Yes, that's right. Ains would have to pull Or down into becoming just a normal child. Ains looked at Mare. It was probably unfair that Or was given a chance to make friends while Mare wasn't. He wanted to give a chance to Mare as well. Or and Mare were children entrusted to him by Bukubi Kuchigama. He should then treat them equally. Of course, he should take their personal characteristics into account while nurturing them. That said, they should both be given equal opportunities. First of all, it's absurd for someone like me who has no experience in raising children to think about things like these. Who should I go asking for advice on being a father? Ains suddenly thought of Inferior. Not a bad choice. He is a good father. But, yes, there's one problem with Mare. And it's not his timid personality. It's about Bukubi Kuchigama san making mere crossdress to match her tastes. He already noticed that most of the dark elves in the village wore long trousers. There were also some who wore long skirts, but all of them were women. Furthermore, he felt like they were still wearing long trousers underneath those skirts. He couldn't be sure as he didn't go around peeking under the skirts after all. 
Maybe those were tights, not trousers. Or explained that exposing bare skin was a bad idea when you live in a forest. So maybe that's why they were wearing trousers underneath. Perfect unknowable gets dispelled when you attack someone. No, to be more precise, it's when you do something that can be considered harmful. In that case, would lifting the skirt a bit and peeking under it be considered an attack? Such a doubt never came to Ains's mind until now. Ains took a quick glance at Mare's face. Ah, uh, eh, well what's the matter? Am I an idiot? What the hell am I thinking? The non-degenerate side of Ains no, the normal side of him scolded himself. Of course, he knew he couldn't do something like that, but his curiosity about an unexplored area of magic was strongly urging him. Stop. Me. What are you thinking? Wanting to peek under Mare's skirt is already beyond the bounds of curiosity. Although Mare would probably allow it if he asked. What am I even imagining? Well what happened? Nothing, my mind just went to some weird places. I will probably try it in the future, but it's not a matter for the present, and I will test it on someone else, if and when I do it. Ains didn't feel the need to explain more to the puzzled mare. Anyway, Albedo was the better choice to experiment with at least the more acceptable choice compared to mare. Another voice inside him objected that mare was different from Albedo. Ains cleared it from his mind along with his prickling curiosity. Anyhow, Mare will likely be marginalized for his dressing style. That should absolutely be avoided, but I wonder why he dresses like that. No, no, not that. That's not what I should be thinking about right now. It's Shigama Sen's decision, so it's absolutely wrong to tell him to change. It's wrong but, is it fine to ask him to change, temporarily? It should be alright for Mare to live with Aura in the village if he stopped. Crossdressing, but... Ains never expected he would be put in such a difficult position because of the tastes of his friend in the past. You see, Mare. I have something to discuss with you. Yes. Mare looked at him with a serious expression. Chigama-san. Am I doing something wrong? A pink blob surfaced in Ains's mind. He got a little irritated at the pink blob, which was giving him a thumbs up for some reason. He excuse me. Sorry Mare. I was thinking about something. Ains let out a sigh from his non-existent lungs and turned to look at Mare directly. Mare. I want you to stop wearing female attire for a while. That was too short of an explanation. Ains understood this and continued before Mare could change his expression. Listen just as I said it will be temporary because you do know I am planning to take you along to the village to act as aura support. So because the clothes you wear are too striking as a part of preparations for infiltration I hope you can change the different clothes for this mission. Ains talked on and on at a hurried pace. Mare continued to stare at Ains. He was probably thinking why he was the only when being told to do so, because Ains didn't say anything like this to war. Ains couldn't get any more words out. No feasible excuse came to his mind. Actually, it's illogical to consider a man dressing like a woman weird, but not vice versa. Did Bukubiku Chigama think so, far ahead? No, it's her taste or more like her fetish. She's parents and sister after all. His only option was to deceive Mare then. Luckily Or also changed most of her gear and weapons, because the equipment they usually wear in Nazarek was just too striking. He never thought that would come in handy in a time like this. I also asked Aura to change her gear a bit right. It would be bad if they were to get suspicious of our overly powerful gear. So how about it? This is underhanded letting Mare decide is the same as pushing the responsibility onto him. Ah understood. Leave it to me Ains Sama. Is that alright? Yes. If it's for infiltration I think Bikubiku Chigama Sama would understand. He is that so? Yumu. She would certainly understand our reasons. Ain sensed Mare's feelings for Bukubiku Chigama through his devotion to his attire, he tried to think how his friend in the past would have reacted in this place. It's highly likely that she would just faint in agony and start apologizing to Mare. No, the opposite reaction is also entirely probable, I think. With this, he could probably consider War and Mare's friend making plan to have proceeded into the final stage. Good, then let's complete our preparations and join up with Or. Aura stood holding a bow, at a place some distance away from the village. Made, of metal, it was far more burly than the ones the Dark Elves normally use. It was also taller than Aura. Aura drew and loosed the string repeatedly, making the bow screech. It was a great bow that originally belonged to the village, one that even the strongest of them weren't able to draw. The Dark Elves initially widened their eyes when they saw a child draw it so effortlessly, but they also immediately made expressions that said they had come to terms with it. The way this was stored leaves a lot to be desired. It's making all these sounds, because parts of it have deteriorated, you know. Is this why no one was able to draw it? Hmm, it feels unstable. I wonder if the arrow will really go where I aim it at. 
Her current target was called a Giga Horn Elk, a magic beast similar to an elk. Despite its huge antlers, it could move gracefully inside the forest using Forest Walker. This ability made its charges extremely destructive. Aura would have probably looked like a stylish hunter if she stood still while passionately tracking her prey with a sharp gaze, but Ames couldn't see any tension in her side profile she was just being her usual self. She was nonchalant, like she was just about to pick up some random stone and throw it. In contrast, the other three rangers from the village two men and one woman were in a completely different stance. They were hiding from the praise, senses, their faces the epitome of seriousness itself. Ames didn't know how they did it, but they were also wiping out their presence by clearing their minds of all thoughts. These dark elves had yet to knock their bows, although they were holding them. Normally, they would all shoot at the same time to prevent the prey from escaping, and to also reduce the chances of a disastrous counterattack, but they were not doing so now because they didn't want to get in Aura's way. The fact that they all stayed on the ground this time showed their intentions. Normally, dark elves positioned themselves on trees that were as safe as possible, fearing counterattacks from prey. They would then wait for the kind of prey they could deal with. Bushwhack style hunting, so to speak. The fact that they were on the ground despite that demonstrated their trust in Or. And what was Ains doing is the one worst at stealth among the members of this hunt. The one and only perfect unknowable. He was using it so much that he started to feel uneasy whether he was relying too much on it. Anyhow, after he hid his presence with it, neither the prey nor the dark elves looked like they had noticed him. He had been following them this entire hunt, but Or was the only one who sensed him. Or released the arrow. About the same time or maybe just a little later, in the time it took to blink, the Giga Horn Elk moved its head to observe his surroundings. It probably noticed the twang of the bow that sounded out of place in the forest, 